YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, it's about a week before Quartz Fest, the big ham radio RV or gathering up near Quartzsite, Arizona, and I'm starting to get ready for it. Um, but I needed something for the channel this week, so I thought, you know, there's another mode in FL Digi that probably a lot of you have never used um, Sitor Navtex. Navtex. Uh, Navtex. Um, and I thought, well, you know, let's talk about that because it's something interesting and uh, you can receive it and decode it and it uh, might be of interest to some of you. Some of you. I can't speak today. Um, Navtex, which stands for Navigational Telex, is not really a mode as much as it is a format. Sitor is the modulation mode or method that's used, which is a frequency shift keyed mode like radio teletype. It is in fact a form of radio teletype. Um, and Navtex is a way of organizing the information, a format for the information that is sent out using Sitor. It's primarily targeted at um, boats, at, at the marine world out on the oceans. Um, think back for a moment to pre-satellite communications days and being out on a boat was truly being cut off from the rest of the world i mean you were out on the ocean there was nothing um radio was your lifeline it was everything to to keep track of what's going on in the world communicate with you know the rest of the world it was radio and uh the coast guard and uh, other uh, other agencies around the world started broadcasting weather bulletins uh, weather facsimile, which we've looked at before in a previous video. Um, news and informational bulletins and stuff were, were broadcast on regular, regular schedules. I think way back in those days they used um, regular BAWDOT radio teletype uh, type transmissions, but eventually that's, you know, moved on with newer encoding methods and stuff like Sitor, which has something called forward error correcting, which means it's it's the little mathematical process they do with a few extra bits that get sent so they can correct errors. Uh, so you get a more robust um, decode, more robust and, and complete decoding of the text. And so um, various agencies like the Coast Guard here in the US will send out bulletins on HF radio um, on prescribed frequencies actually it's right down there at the bottom of medium wave it's below the am broadcast band two frequencies 490 and 519 kilohertz are the two frequencies that they they send these out on and uh there's a schedule for it and uh i'll, I'll put links in the uh, description below to the websites there's a, a wikipedia um, article on navtex that gives you a bit of history but more interestingly there is an, a, uh, a schedule, which at the top here shows a map. And the world is divided up into various areas shown with the Roman numerals here. So like the U.S. is area 11, no, 12, area 12. And um, the schedule, if we scroll down, is for the different nav areas. So if I go down to area 12, which is the U.S., we'll get a schedule. Here we go, nav area 12. Uh, 490 kilohertz is used for just a few of them, and then 518 kilohertz is used for the rest. And the uh, times are shown there. It's on the hour, and each station it's divided up every four hours. So it's on a specific schedule. And there are, there are receivers that are designed for this stuff. Um, and what you can do then is have your boat or your ship have the receiver sitting there and it'll spit out a bulletin if one comes across. They don't always transmit directly on the, uh, the scheduled time. I guess if they don't have any news to, to transmit, they don't transmit. But I will be monitoring and I'll, I'll show you one that we decode here in a bit. So um, these happen all around the world. You can decode them with uh, FL Digi, which I'll be using. I'm pretty sure Digital Master or whatever the Windows guys use has probably got Sitor and Navtex. It's, it's common enough that it's probably going to exist in any of those types of programs. But uh, what they send out are bulletins that are related to uh, marine things. Um, uh, uh, 
specific weather alerts, uh, tsunami warnings. Um, uh, a viewer commented to me, uh, William Northcote, I think, hey, Bill, commented to me uh, on a video that uh, he was copying um, Navtex and they were sending out information on sunken ships with active or still armed ordnance in certain areas so that people could avoid those areas. I mean, it's, it's going to be marine related stuff, but I find it interesting, you know, um, just, just, just to see what's out there. So I've been talking enough. Let's go to the computer and uh, look at an actual Navtex transmission and see what kind of bulletins they send you out. I'm all set to decode what should be a bulletin coming from the Coast Guard in a little over a couple of minutes. The uh, transmit frequency is 518 kilohertz, so I'm set to 517 upper sideband, which means in the waterfall right here at 1 kilohertz, that should be 518 kilohertz right there. If that's their transmit frequency, I should be set. Op mode in FL Digi is set to Navtex, as you can see here. And in just over a minute, we should see the transmission begin. And here we go. Yep. They say the transmission frequency is 518 kilohertz, so you want to go 1 kilohertz lower, 517, set to upper sideband. And uh, here we are at 1 kilohertz in the waterfall, so that is 518 kilohertz, and that is the Sitor. Oh, that was short. Uh, the Noyo River is missing. I think that means this bulletin is missing. That was short. Usually the transmissions are pretty long and they're full bulletins. I'll just uh, keep the software running here and start recording when the next one comes across. And hopefully we'll get a full bulletin. Well, now I'm receiving one of the farther away stations. And I'll turn the radio up. Hopefully you can hear this. So they are right down in the noise, barely tickling the S-meter at all. And uh, doing pretty good on decoding. Usually, it, well, the one that I heard, heard yesterday was stronger. It must have been San Francisco. This might be Alaska. I'm not sure. But... Uh, that's right down in the noise, and I'm getting pretty darn good copy out of that. Look at that. So that's actually pretty impressive. Um, and this looks like it is uh, forecasts. Weather forecast of some type. And we are dropping out some characters. Yeah, we didn't quite get a copy on the beginning of the uh, bulletin. It was too weak. I'm using my doublet for the antenna, which is too short for these low frequencies. But it's, And it's the middle of the day. So I'm surprised I'm picking it up at all. But as you can see, we're actually doing a fair job of decoding. Even with a signal that's right down in the noise. Pretty fascinating. Interesting stuff. So that's Navtex, um, yet another digital mode on radio that you can decode using commonly available software and uh, perhaps of interest to some of you, um, especially if you're living on a boat. There's a lot of nomads that live on sailboats and uh, you know nowadays, of course, I got everything through the internet, through the satellites. But uh, if you have an HF radio, there's a backup way to get some bulletins and information if you need it. By the way, along those lines, um, 500 kilohertz is still an emergency channel. Uh, apparently, there's still monitoring stations listening. If you're on a boat and you have an emergency uh, and you have the ability to transmit on 500 kilohertz, <laughs> well, that narrows it down to probably four or five people in the world, but <laughs> you can still call for help on it and it's monitored. 
So uh, anyway, there you go, another digital mode that you can copy and, and decode on radio. Now, Quartz Fest, it's coming up in uh, a week, um, actually less than a week now, six days is when it starts up at uh, Quartzsite, Arizona, and I'll be heading up there for the event. Um, and uh, I, I probably will run into a few viewers up there, and that's cool. I, I, I do actually enjoy that, talking to people. And if you see me there, uh, feel free to walk up and say hi. Um, I'm not like, I'm just like you. I'm just a guy. I'm not like a celebrity or anything. <laughs> Although that still happens. People treat me like I am, and it kind of bugs me a little because I'm just a guy. So, yeah, feel free to, to come up and talk to me. Uh, the Omicron variant of the coronavirus is... Uh, peaking at this time in activity. Cases are exploding. I know of, I've heard of several people in this area that have already had it or got it. Uh, I will be wearing a mask when I'm out uh, talking to people. And if you don't like that, um, I don't care. I'll be wearing a mask. And if you want to come up and talk to me, um, please wear one. Uh, I don't think I have it. I don't. But if I do happen to catch it and don't know that I have it yet, I don't want to make you sick. You know, that's why I wear a mask. It's not to protect me because it's not that effective at doing that. It's to protect you. You know, if I happen to have picked it up here and didn't know it yet, and I'm walking around up there spreading it, I could inadvertently kill somebody. So I'll be wearing a mask. Um, and if you want to come up and talk to me, please, please uh, have one on as well. Uh, so I do look forward to it, and I hope to meet a few of you there at Quartz Fest. And uh, I'll be shooting video and taking lots of pictures and uh, probably have a couple of videos uh, to follow. The next one will be probably from Quartz Fest. So if you're going, hope to see you there. Uh, there's going to be several hundred hams and RVs. Uh, I think last year it was, or the year before, it was near a thousand or over a thousand people that signed in for it. So it's it's quite a big event out there in the desert near Quartzsite. There will be hundreds and hundreds of hams and a field of antennas all set up. And I'm looking forward to it. So we'll see you there. Till the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.